up, good morning to you. This is Taki Tai. Today we are looking at why Socrates hated democracy. And again, this is another video from the School of Life. Be sure to check out the original link down in the description down below. Give them the love and support that they well deserve. Also, if you have any other future video topics that you'd like to watch together, just let me know over on my Patreon and the link is down below as well. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, do you, like, why do you think Socrates hated democracy? And do you? Let me know. But yeah, let's get started. We're used to thinking very highly of democracy, and by extension, of ancient Athens, the civilization that gave rise to it. Mm -hmm. The Parthenon has become almost a byword for democratic values, which is why so many leaders of democracies like to be photographed there. It's therefore very striking to discover that one of ancient Greece's greatest achievements, philosophy, was highly suspicious of its other achievement, democracy. Yeah, the, I feel like they were more for a republic as opposed to democracy because, I mean, in essence, democracy is 51% voting to, to kill the other 49%. Uh, in its true essence, that's democracy, and a republic would be some elected officials of the aristocracy votes to kill everybody else uh, that's not part of their class, uh, and as and then the other would be a monarch, a single person votes to kill everybody. I don't know why I'm using the analogy of of offing people, but. Historically, that's, that's usually kind of how things go. The founding father of Greek philosophy, Socrates, is portrayed in the dialogues of Plato as hugely pessimistic about the whole business of democracy. In Book 6 of The Republic... Well, and just because, like, historically, most people were not literate. They were not, like, they, they weren't very learned, um, really, about most things. Uh, just because they they lived simple lives. They they were like they just weren't like up to really making informed decisions um, because they did, they didn't have access to data. And usually, when you don't have any like resources or access to to data, uh, you're very influenced by by people that are well versed and very charismatic. Um, Plato describes Socrates falling into conversation with a character called Adimantus yeah, whether and trying to get him to see the flaws of democracy not. by comparing a society to a ship. If you were heading out on a journey by sea, asks Socrates, who would you ideally want deciding who was in charge of the vessel? Yeah, there's someone that knows how to sail and how to navigate, or who's the most popular kid on the block and the most charismatic an eloquent talker. Just anyone or people educated in the rules and demands of seafaring? The latter, of course, says Adimantus. So why then, responds Socrates, do we keep thinking that any old person should be fit to judge who should be the ruler of a country? Socrates' point is that voting in an election is a skill, not a random intuition. And like Yeah, but that also, like, while well, that in principle that's great, but also, like, there's always that oppression where it's like anytime there's only a select number of people that are able to actually cast a vote, then there's just a large portion that are disenfranchised and not, not included. And then that's where you come to, like, oppression and, and just a lot of nasty things. Um, Any skill, it needs to be taught systematically to people. Letting the citizenry vote without an education is as irresponsible as putting them in charge of a trireme sailing to Samos in a storm. Well, that's why education is so important, especially for everyone, all citizens, all children, men, women alike. Socrates was to have first-hand catastrophic experience of the foolishness of voters. In 399 BC, the philosopher was put on trial on trumped-up charges of corrupting the youth of Athens. Yeah, just because they, it was against the status quo, because he was a great thinker. He was very opposed to the status quo, 
and brought up new questions that were perhaps uncomfortable to the masses. And that's why we still know his name today as Socrates. Uh, unfortunately, he experiences the first hand of an uninformed voting populace. A jury of 500 Athenians was invited to weigh up the case and decided by a narrow margin that the philosopher was guilty. He was put to death by hemlock in a process which is, for thinking people, every bit as tragic as Jesus' condemnation. Yeah, hemlock. I mean, it's basically where you, you have to you have to drink a poison and, and, and kill yourself uh, in a cell. ...has been for Christians. Crucially, Socrates was not elitist in the normal sense. He didn't believe that a narrow few should only ever vote. He did, however, insist that only those who had thought about issues rationally and deeply should be let near a vote. Yeah, so it's more, he's more for a republic. And really, back in those days, everything was, was big state policy. It was all usually uh, different forms of monarchy. Well, actually, monarchy would come later, but it was, it was basically like single family rule um, and uh, just like strong leaders. And so really a republic in of itself was really a revolutionary ideal at the time, let alone a democracy. Democracy is really, really a fairly new concept and practice thing. Um, really, even, even America is really kind of one of the first, um, first democracies that really kind of kicked off a lot of, a lot of the others, like the French Revolution, um, which even created even more, um, kicked off other revolts, basically. Uh, that's why the year 1842 is so notable, because literally it was where the whole world erupted into basically a a fever uh, of revolt globally for a change in the aristocracy and monarchies of the world. We have forgotten this distinction between an intellectual democracy and a democracy by birthright. We have given the vote to all without connecting it to wisdom. And Socrates knew exactly where that would lead, to a system the Greeks feared above all, demagoguery. Yeah. See, and that's where just some, and that's why so many, so many people in the populace hate politicians today, because it, it's, it's going down the slippery slope of demonagogy, uh, where it's just someone that's just charismatic and will promise the world and never actually follows through. And it's just swaying the masses. Um, and then you have absolute Ism. Ancient Athens had painful experience of demagogues. For example, the louche figure of Alcibiades, a rich, charismatic, smooth-talking, wealthy man who eroded basic freedoms and helped to push Athens to its disastrous military adventures in Sicily. Yeah. Socrates knew how easily people seeking election could exploit our desire for easy answers. Mm -hmm. He asked us to imagine an election debate between two... Just promise them the world, and then once you're in power, you don't have to do nothing and you can do whatever you want and send everyone to war to go conquer some distant land. And it's just, that's history for you. <laughs> Two candidates, one who was like a doctor and the other who was like a sweet shop owner. The sweet shop owner would say of his rival, look, this person here has worked many evils on you. He hurts you, gives you bitter potions and tells you not to eat and drink whatever you like. He'll never serve you feasts of many and varied pleasant things like I will. Socrates asks us to consider the audience's response. Do you think the doctor would be able to reply effectively? The true answer, I cause you trouble and go against your desires in order to help you, would cause an uproar among the voters. Do yeah, it's true. And they would, they would probably off him. Like, real, like realistically, like they would... They'd be up in arms against him and have him dragged off the stage into a mob um, where the sweet shop owner, they would praise and anyone that objects to that ide ideology um, would be condemned. Don't you think? 
We have forgotten all about Socrates' salient warnings against democracy. We have preferred to think of democracy as an unambiguous good rather than as something that is only ever as effective as the education system that surrounds it. Yeah, and that's, again, why education is so important. Self-education, too, uh, because our, our governed education is good. I mean, it's, it's really elevated the, the status of a collective thinking globally. Uh, just by implementing basic literacy and education. Um, like, because not that long ago, nobody would really know how to read or write even. Like, for most of human history, a lot of people didn't know how to read and write. And really, it was only kind of a few select people that did uh, to really a comprehensible level um, so, I mean, and history goes back a decent ways. Um, As a result, we have elected many sweet shop owners yeah. and very few doctors. Yeah. But again, as always, check out the original video down in the link in the description down below. Let me know your comments down below as well. Um, what do you think about democracy? Uh, what do you think about a republic or even a monarchy uh, how do those compare in your eyes do you think we should elevate the education of the populace in order to vote or do you think it should be just a given birthright let me know and i will see you on the next one cheers